With a stop in Athens, Greece, Helios Airways Flight 522 was a scheduled passenger flight that originated in Larnaca, Cyprus, and ended in Prague, Czech Republic. Air Traffic Control, ATC, lost contact with the Olympia aircraft shortly after takeoff on August 14, 2005. The aircraft crashed near Grammatico, Greece, killing all 121 passengers and crew. It is the deadliest aircraft accident in Greek history. During the takeoff inspections, the crew neglected to switch the pressurization system to automatic. As a result of the plane's lack of pressurization throughout the trip, practically everyone on board suffered from widespread hypoxia, resulting in a ghost flight. In this video, we examine one of the shocking instances of hypoxia during flight, a truly unnerving experience. Let's get started. The Boeing 737, 300 involved in this disaster, was originally registered as DADBQ. It was flown for the first time on December 29, 1997, and it was owned and operated by DBA from 1998 until 2004. It was leased by Helios Airways on April 16, 2004, and it was re-registered as 5BDBY under the name Olympia. In addition to the lost aircraft, the Helios fleet included one Airbus A319-102, leased Boeing 737-800ES, that were both delivered on May 14, 2005. On the day of the incident, the aircraft had landed at Larnaca International Airport from London Heathrow Airport at 1.25 local time. The plane was supposed to take off from Larnaca at 9 o'clock and land at Prague Ruzine International Airport, stopping at Athens International Airport for a layover at 10.45. The pilot of the aircraft was Hans-Jürgen Merten, a 58-year-old contract pilot from East Germany who Helios hired for vacation flights. With 35 years of aviation experience, he had accrued 16,900 flight hours. First officer was 51-year-old Cypriot pilot Pampos Charalambus, who had flown exclusively for Helios for the preceding five years, logging 7,549 hours of flight time, 3,991 on the Boeing 737. Luisa Vuteri, a 32-year-old Greek national residing in Cyprus, assumed the role of chief flight attendant. Early on August 14, 2005, Helios Airways Flight 522 departed from Larnaca International Airport, LCA, for Vaclav Havel Airport, PRG, in Prague. It was anticipated that the flight would be a fairly simple standard operation with a brief layover at Athens International Airport, ATH, later that morning. All 121 passengers were killed when the Boeing 737-300 crashed into the hills close to Grammatico, eastern Greece, less than three hours later. The catastrophe would go down in aviation history as one of the strangest and most unsettling aviation incidents of the 21st century, prompting questions about how anything could go so wrong during a time of greater safety. Founded in 1998, Helios Airways was a low-cost airline based in Cyprus. It began as a tiny airline operating scheduled passenger flights between Europe, Larnaca and Faifus, but eventually expanded to include flights to North Africa. The crew had to halt the ascent after the aircraft's cabin altitude warning system went off five minutes after takeoff. By this time, the aircraft was 12,040 feet above the ground. The signal sounded exactly like the takeoff configuration warning, so the crew disregarded it and continued rising. As ZU-522 flew higher, the oxygen levels decreased and the crew was unaware of the slow drop in cabin pressure. The pilots discovered an air conditioning problem seven minutes into the flight and reported it to the airline's operations department. At the same time, oxygen masks were put on after ascending to 18,000 feet. By 9.20, after the operations center had finished interacting with the crew, the pilots were becoming harder to reach. The operators were not aware that the crew was suffering from hypoxia in its early stages. The 737 leveled out at 34,000 feet by 9.23, which is significantly higher than the 10 foot threshold for allowable oxygen levels. Order of events. The crew had lost consciousness due to additional pressure loss, so at 9.37, the aircraft entered the Athens Flight Information Zone and started circling on autopilot. Two Greek F-16 fighter jets were sent to intercept the aeroplane when the pilots stopped responding to control signals. They took out at 11.05 and found the plane after about 20 minutes. As the jet pilots got closer to ZU-522, they noticed a strange sight. The first officer was dozing off over the controls and the captain's seat was empty. At 11.49, they witnessed a cabin crew member approach the cockpit with an oxygen supply. He and his partner made a valiant but unsuccessful attempt to steer the aeroplane. 
the aircraft's left engine started to burn out from loss of fuel despite the pilot's attempts to visually communicate with the F-16 pilots, causing the 737 to plummet. The flight attendant, later identified as Andreas Prodromo, made the courageous decision to direct the aircraft away from Athens in order to save casualties on the ground, even though he was unable to regain control of the aircraft. Sadly, at 12.04, Helios Airways Flight 522 crashed into a steep area close to Grammatico, Greece, killing 121 persons total, 115 passengers and six crew members on board, the impact was tremendous, splintering metal and other debris over two craggy hills. The majority of the casualties remained strapped into their chairs. The fact that the galley carts were put away showed that the cabin crew had not started serving food or drinks yet. The part of the aircraft that was most intact was the tail. Amidst the bent metal and burnt brush was a massive image of the Greek sun god, the crest created during Helios's heyday. Systemic deficits. ZU-522's departure was caused by several systemic flaws at Helios Airways, which were discovered during the subsequent investigation into the catastrophe. On earlier flights operated by 5B DBY, there have been multiple reports of cabin pressure issues. One major occurrence occurred on December 16, 2004, when the crew of an aircraft leaving Warsaw Chopin Airport was forced to descend because of a sudden drop in cabin pressure. At the time, the Cypriot Air Accident and Incident Investigation Board determined that an electrical issue and the inadvertent opening of the aft service door were the two most likely causes. The weeks leading up to ZU-522, a number of staff members and passengers on board the aircraft reported experiencing issues with the air conditioning system and frequent freezing temperatures. This prompted seven independent assessments of the environmental control system of the aircraft. Members of the team noticed ice on the R2 door, and heard pounding sounds the night before. The issue was reported upon arrival in Larnaca, and Helios Airways specialists, under the guidance of seasoned aircraft maintenance specialist Alan Irwin, got to work on the evaluation. The crew conducted a pressurization test, which necessitated switching the aircraft from automatic to manual mode in order to check for any issues since they were worried about a possible leak in the door seal. None could be found, and the Irwin team asserted that the door had no flaws. It was routine procedure for Irwin's personnel to return the aircraft to its automated pressure setting, but they had forgotten to do so. After studying the pre-flight procedure checklist several hours later, Helios Airways workers failed to detect that the pressurization mode selection was set to manual, leaving ZU-522 totally unpressurized when it took off from Larnaca. This oversight occurred as the morning's flight crew boarded the aircraft. After effects, Two weeks after the incident, Helios Airways returned its Boeing aircraft to service after grounding them for safety inspections. But the catastrophe significantly damaged the airline's reputation, and by the end of 2005, Helios Airways had changed its name to Agit. The airline stopped conducting regular flights in March 2006, but it kept running as a charter service until October 2006. Later, to lessen the chance of human error on subsequent flights, the Federal Aviation Administration FAA, issued an Airworthiness Directive AD, mandating all original and classic 737 variants to install additional warning lights on the flight deck to distinguish between takeoff configuration and pressurization issues. The airlines that experienced a hypoxic episode that ended in a crash wasn't Helios Airways alone. One of the most well-known instances of in-flight hypoxia prior to ZU-522 involved American golfer Payne Stewart, who passed away along with five other passengers after a Learjet. 35's pressurization system failed. After several hours of flight, the private aircraft N-47BA crashed in Edmonds County, South Dakota, leaving all occupants disabled. Aircraft disasters follow a ritualistic process. Every twisted and burned component that is found after an aircraft crash is painstakingly identified, labelled and mapped. The findings are then submitted to examination boards who conduct inquiries, pose questions and draw conclusions. Its foundation is the notion that lessons learned from one calamity could aid in averting another. But part of disaster rituals is a blame game that emphasises human error. The first thing Greek aviation investigators focused on after the disaster was the theory that the pressurization selector switch had been left in manual mode instead of auto mode. They blamed human error for this, especially Alan Irwins, the aircraft engineer. It was the start of an eight-year legal battle for him. His 20-year marriage to his wife was destroyed and he lost both his equilibrium and his career. Lawsuits against Helios Airways and Boeing 
were filed as a result of the disaster's recklessness and the airline was shut down by the Cypriot government the following year. Please remember to subscribe to our channel, like and share our content and join our expanding community of aviation enthusiasts. I'll see you in the next videos.